I love Sanmonani. My name is Timbeli Hile Samgelisi Wepengu. I am from South Africa, currently living and working teaching in Taiwan. So on today's video, as you guys may have already seen by the title, I will be unpacking the process of traveling to and actually securing a job in Taiwan. So I know that um, there are a lot of videos online or on YouTube speaking about other countries, but I haven't really seen a lot of videos speaking specifically about South Africans trying to move to Taiwan, like unpacking the entire process, um, what to expect, as well as tips of how to actually secure the job because i feel like as much as people can share with us that oh this is what you need to do this is what is required for you but they are not really being um specific about how to actually secure the job because that's what you want to get the job but then again um this is going to be a very long video but i am going to do the first part of the video or the first part of sharing the information which is going to be me sharing the application process as well as the requirements the benefits salary as well as just the pre coming to taiwan necessities things that you need to know things that you need to prepare for things that you need to look forward to and then maybe on the second part of the video which is something that i really want to unpack as well is what to expect when you come this side maybe the process of you um finding an apartment settling in your school things that you need to really be aware of especially when it comes to culture changes and culture shock as well as just being able to come here and enjoy being um, a foreigner in, in a foreign country so without rambling any further um please do not forget to subscribe and comment if you guys do enjoy this kind of videos please let me know in the comment section down below um <clears throat> and everything including the um, websites including the agencies or any information that i feel like is going to be helpful i will link it on my description box so i will have all the links down below and if i didn't put any link in the description box it means that you can simply find that information on google but i will unpack everything as detailed as i can okay so i have my notes pad with me because i have been writing so many things i didn't realize that there's actually so much information that we can share yes people do send me dms but guys it takes so much time to respond and you know keep saying the same thing to every person who sends an inbox so i decided you know what maybe it's finally time for me to just do this video and then whenever someone um, wants to know information then I can just send them the link to this video and please share this video so that a lot of people can get the information that they need and you know so that we can all like get opportunities right so step number one when you apply you need to make sure that you qualify so a lot of people have been asking what are the qualifications if I have a bachelor's degree in accounting can I apply um, qualifications from what i've what i know and from what i've um seen shown <clears throat> by the agencies that i use is you need to have a bachelor's degree so um if you have a diploma i would suggest that you get yourself a btech um also bear in mind that not all the universities in south africa are eligible for teaching or they are eligible for credibility and especially because I know people who have degrees from UNISA and they are not eligible to teach in Taiwan. So please make sure that you um, have a bachelor's degree, maybe from the other universities, which I'm going to link or show on the screen. Um, and then you can have any bachelor's degree. It could be in music, it could be in drama, it could be anything, especially because right now Taiwan is, is transitioning to becoming bilingual. So we are teaching various subjects, um, but it's very important for you to have a bachelor's degree, especially from universities that are recognized. 
Okay, number two, you need to have a passport. Your passport must be valid. Please do not start your application if you do not have your passport. That is very important because you need your passport to, you know, to make sure that you, you start your process. How can you apply without a passport, guys? Come on. If maybe you already do have a passport, make sure that it's valid. It has... Yeah, it has more than six pages and make sure that it hasn't expired. Okay, and then the next thing you need to have is a police clearance. Your police clearance must be valid within the period of six months. So please make sure that your police clearance is ready. So my advice, make sure you have your passport, go to your police clearance, because sometimes your police clearance can take up to three months so make sure that you get that done if you do have a police clearance that is already um valid at the moment make sure that you speed up your process and you start your application as soon as possible okay the next thing is that if you have a teaching degree you need to have says so what is says says is a teaching license that all qualified teachers um have or need to have in south africa um, I do, however, know that it's possible for you to get a temporal say certificate or teaching license if you do not have a bachelor's degree. So my advice is visit the websites or go to SAIS in Pretoria or you can even call them and inquire more about that process and how you can actually um, apply for a temporal teaching license, which is valid for like 12 months. I'd like to believe so. And then... You can get that and start your application the next thing that you need to uh, be aware of is your age or so roughly or normally it's between the ages of 21 to 55 so yes you can still come to Taiwan or you can still secure a job in Taiwan if you are 40 50 years old right and also the most important thing is that you need to be sure that you come from a native speaking country luckily south africa is recognized as a native speaking country meaning that um we are being taught in english and english is the medium of instruction at schools and in the country so be aware of that and i will unpack i will unpack um when it comes to the process of application what makes it different if you are coming from South Africa or if you are coming from a native speaking country like South Africa where we have um, many in indigenous languages or many traditional languages. Right, so now let's speak about the application process. The application process, roughly it takes about six to eight weeks depending on you, how prepared you are. So like I said, Make sure you have your passport ready. Make sure that you have your police clearance ready. Make sure that all the requirements needed are ready. If you have that ready, then your process is going to be roughly maybe four to six weeks. If you follow the steps and if you make sure that you follow the tips that I'm going to share in this video, then chances are you will secure the job. Right, so the process. <clears throat> well, um... There are agencies or there are chains of line where you can um, send your CV and you will be able to secure a job in a public school because public schools comes, come with benefits. Unlike private schools, yes, there are pros and cons between the two, which I will unpack in a separate video. But um, I prefer that for the first timer, um applicant or if you are someone who's traveling abroad for the first time i would advise you to go on and apply but make sure that you apply to secure a job at a public school so that you can get to experience what is it like really and you can also rip all the benefits that comes with teaching in public schools or teaching for um or working for the government to be to be quite honest, it's very rewarding and it's so much better, especially for first-time applicants. Well, there are various agencies, but there are two famous or most popular agencies in Taiwan, which I'm going to share. The first one that I'm also currently under is Phoenix Group Asia. Phoenix Group Asia um, is a very um, 
nice company to work with because their communication is very efficient they're very fast they will respond within one to two to three days and also they are very helpful like throughout the entire process I've had no problems with the agency and the second one is teach Taiwan which is also a bit similar when it comes to the process and how they handle things right so the first thing you need to do is send your cv right so i know guys some some of you maybe you just um finished university you haven't been working um since you graduated because we know the the situation in south africa especially when it comes to employment but there have been programs in south africa like teaching assistants and i know that a lot of young people have been um given the opportunity to work as teacher assistants so yes that is experience if not i am sure you do have experience especially if you have a teaching degree you can add teaching practicals yes your teaching practicals you can add that as your experience and then you should be fine but other than that at any relevant information or experience that you have especially with kids or with teaching kids that is going to come in very handy and very helpful so your cv make sure your cv is straight to the point skip hobbies you know those things yes they are important but they they are not the the main core of your cv in your cv you want to include the following things you want to include um your qualifications your experience um information about your experience when was your last job what are you currently doing or what is your current job be honest please do not lie and say oh um, maybe you are currently working as a teacher while you are not just be honest you know the main thing that is going to lend you the job is actually your qualifications and your teaching demos as well as your teaching intro i mean your introductory video which is what i'm going to touch on later on in this video and also make sure that you include your references so references are very important because um they help the agency or they help the school which is interested in employing you to find out more about you what kind of a person you are so <clears throat> if you do not have any experience then i would suggest that maybe you can put um references maybe you can add your lecturer or you can add your high school teachers you know find people who are in the professional <clears throat> who are in the professional field who can help you and who can share um good things about you people who know how you are as a person and also how you are in a working environment now let's jump straight to the actual preparation and the actual application right so um like i said agencies normally take one to three days to respond on each email or within the you know the communication between you and the agency mainly because they have so many applications so you must be very mindful and please be patient sometimes they might take five to seven days to respond be patient all i know they will respond whether they want to proceed with the application or not they will tell you so just make sure that your cv is well prepared so that you can move on to the next step right so now i'm going to unpack the main steps now that you have your cv ready and now that you want to proceed and um, send your cv let's say already you've sent your cv good but then now this is what you need to prepare for be mindful that the agency is going to respond and they are going to ask you to send an intro video so an introduction video is a video that is supposed to help them understand who you are they are going to see your face they want to see how you you know behave maybe um in terms of facial expressions body language but importantly or most importantly they want to see how you pronounce how you speak they want to see the fluency of your um english so this is the most important video this video is the video to your success this is the video where you are going to make sure that you secure the interview or maybe you secure the teaching job so 
during this time they will ask you to send an intro video and then in the intro video you are going to mention these specific things you don't just talk about anything please mention these following things the first thing you want to mention is um, you want to mention your name, the country that you come from, the qualifications that you have, your experience, as well as your skills and why you want to move to Taiwan. Simple. You don't need to speak about things that you like to do for fun. You don't have to speak about food you like to eat. Right now, you want to be specific because they want to see, like I said, um, how you present yourself, your body language, your facial expressions, your overall appearance, as well as your fluency. Um, when I say overall experience, uh, appearance, some people might be like, oh, maybe they want to check if I am black or white. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. What matters is that you can um, land the job or if you qualify and if you are good enough to, to get the job. Right, so... Make sure that you are aware of the following things before you um, record your video. Make sure that you look presentable. Look clean. Look clean, look neat, be presentable, and make sure that your background is very simple and clean, clear. And if you are a teacher already, you can use resources like charts. You can also maybe use the classroom, it's okay. But just try to make sure, even when you film, try to make sure that your environment is not noisy so that they can hear you speak clearly and also make sure when you speak, you speak properly. Um, try not to, try to make sure that you pronounce clearly and try to make sure that your R's or Aribako are very clear and also just try to to practice i feel like you know with with this thing of application processes and stuff it's very um intimidating you might feel very nervous it's okay but practice you know record the video look at the video and see if it is good enough for you to send because guys you don't need to make it difficult for someone who's going to be um viewing your video you need to make sure that it is it is easier for them as well because like i said they have many applications right um and also yes have a script um have a script for your video so that you do not um stumble and you do not have any many errors or you do not um move away from the topic or away from the core Things that you need to touch on which are your experience your name the country your skills as well as why you want to move to Taiwan right so now I'm going to move on to the next step which is the step that happens after you send the video so you send the video and then they are going to respond again between one to three days and then when they respond um, so if you followed my tips you are most likely going to get a response or a good response. Um, so this is what they are going to do. So they are going to now tell you that you have to prepare for your teaching demo. A teaching demo can differ in terms of length. It could be five to 10 minutes. It could be 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your experience. In my case, it was five to 10 minutes because I already have the experience. They just wanted to see um, if I can actually teach because you know Someone can say oh, I have so much experience, but okay show us you know type of thing But then other videos can be 10 to 15 minutes, especially maybe if you do not have a lot of teaching experience um, then they would want to see more and maybe just see if you can really hold a lesson So this is what you need to do the agent will ask you about your teaching experience because you already sent your video, so um, before you proceed to sending your teaching demo, they are going to most likely have an interview with you where they call you on Skype and then you guys talk and then they are going to ask you about your teaching experience, the subject that you have taught before, or maybe your majors, if you majored in drama, you know, or if you majored in um, 
music you are going to unpack those things and that's where they are going to ask you more things just to know more about you things that you like the kind of person you are that is where you can share things like your hobbies things that you prefer you know just engage but but try not to be or try not to come off in a wrong way or try to just be humble and really be yourself be yourself and at the same time ask as many questions as you can during that interview it's going to be very helpful because it's going to show that you are someone who is interested it's going to show that you have an interest in lending the job and then also um because Taiwan is working towards becoming um, completely uh, bilingual. Um, so, <clears throat> for example, I teach performing arts because I majored in dramatic arts at university. And I also teach uh, physical education um, because I do have, you know, experience with life orientation. I mean, who didn't do life orientation? So, um, other teachers, they teach music, science, uh, but... Even though we are now not focusing mainly on English as the core subject, but we are still using English to teach all these other bilingual subjects. Because like I said, um, Taiwan is hoping to be completely bilingual by year 2030, if I'm not mistaken. So um, at this point, the agent is going to send you the requirements for the demo. They are not the same. I think they look at your experience, they look at your qualifications, maybe they look at a lot of dynamics. So the requirements are not going to be the same, completely the same, but these are the core requirements or things that are going to be expected from um, the, the agency. So they are going to share the requirements as well as the deadline. So one, you need to prepare. When you prepare, you need to read the instructions carefully. Read the requirements carefully. Make sure that you understand. If you do not understand, use Google to understand. If you, I don't think, after this video, I don't think there will be a reason for you to not understand what is it that you need to do. But anyway, if it happens that you don't understand, then please read carefully. And set up. Make sure that your setup for your teaching demo is a clear background there's no noise again you look presentable cover your breasts you know just look like a decent teacher look like a teacher look like a professional look like you really want to lend yourself this job and <clears throat> you can use a uh, Good lighting, if you have a ring light, use that. If you don't have, you can use natural lighting. Um, use charts, resources, props, anything to enhance your demo. Um, but if you don't have, then it's okay, it's fine. Use what you have, use what you have. Um, also, because, uh, like I said, Taiwan is trying to, or is working towards um, being completely bilingual. So there are programs that are, not the same they they change or they differ city to city like for example in Taoyuan we have the CLIL projects or program or methodology which I'm going to just put on the um, on the screen is the CLIL um, project or program and also um, the teaching or the way that is supposed to be done is through task Based language teaching so look into that if you don't know what is task based teaching um, make sure you Google like everything's on Google just search it up and try to find out what does it mean what is it expected from you before you record your teaching demo so you know what to do right so these are the key points that you need to um, look into in your teaching demo so in your teaching demo they are going to tell you to choose a topic so you can choose between teaching vocabulary teaching sentence patterns teaching reading or extension activities it's up to you but you need to make sure that the topic that you choose you are clear which topic you are teaching you also need to make sure that your topic or your teaching demo it includes warm-up which needs to be two minutes long presentation which needs to be four minutes long practice which needs to be four, min four minutes long as well as wrap up or review which needs to be 
two minutes long so let me just quickly touch on what is warm up presentation and all of that so i will um put on the screen a lesson plan um or a typical basic lesson plan that includes all these things so warm up <clears throat> for example warm up it says two minutes so warm up that is when you introduce the the lesson maybe you can ask the students about the weather how they feel how's the day like or what's the day um and also or you can do tpr you know just to see if they understand um english and if they can use the body language for example tpr that's when you say the students need to follow you you can use um cues like simon says and then you say touch your nose you touch your nose the students are going to do the same thing or you can ask them what day is it today they will answer you know remember this is a teaching demo so you might not actually have the actual students in front of you so that is when you mimic or you pretend as if the students are responding back to you. And then number two, presentation. Presentation is the actual lesson, what you are teaching. So if you are teaching vocabulary, um, teach them the words, introduce the words. For example, maybe you want to teach them body parts. So you can teach them maybe eyes, show them the picture, eyes, and then you say, the word and the students need to follow or repeat after you so you drill that is your presentation and then maybe let's say uh after you finish teaching your vocabulary then um you now want to see if they understand the activity so first presentation introduce all the vocabulary words show them the pictures uh, maybe ask them questions like what is this um, or what can you see with your eyes maybe tell them to look around the class remember it's a teaching demo be creative you can google you can even even maybe when you reach that point where you feel like you are clueless you can just send me a dm i will write my handles or social media handles on my description box you can just send me a dm and i can help you with that part but it's very simple everything is on google these days you can even find lessons on youtube just make sure that you choose a topic that you can teach um and then for presentation that's where you do introduce the words maybe a vocabulary so you show the students all the words you read make sure that you pronounce well clearly and <clears throat> practice so practice that is when you want to see if the students understood so you can make an activity um also you can play a game with the students there are so many games you can play bingo you can play um hangman vocabulary games you can play so many games google the games they are there everything is online guys everything is available online and then um wrap up is or review is where you basically ask the students so what did we learn today and then you review wrap again tell them what you told them in 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 the presentation but in in those two minutes you make sure that you are very quick and also you want to mention things like um, your activity for the day so if maybe you want to give the students a worksheet you might want to include that in your uh, presentation and just pretend like they are doing that worksheet again this requires you to be really creative and try to just pretend as if the students are there because that's what you have to do basically there's nothing else you have to do and then um another thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that your instructions are very clear when you speak during your teaching video or your teaching demo you need to make sure that there is plenty of interaction between you and the students when you pretend and then you even have to make sure that you use task based language teaching whereby you use a project to make sure that you pretend the students are there they are doing the activity call the students pretend that you have sam in class sam please tell us the answer yes good job you know pretend and then also um have fun enjoy be yourself don't be too stuck up relax it'll take a lot of practice even if 
um, it means that you record your teaching demo several times before you you wrap up or before you decide that that's the one that you want to send it's okay you want to get the job right so after you follow my tips you are most likely going to get a job i think that is that is good enough for you to get a job and then you are going to now get a re or receive an email that is going to tell you congratulations you have um received an offer from a school and then now you look into doing the following uh steps so once you have landed a job you are now going to receive the contracts the school is going to draft a contract again now i'm going to unpack how things are different because salaries are not going to be the same the benefits are different depending on a lot of things that i'm going to cover shortly so salary and benefits are going to be really unpacked on the contracts you are going to sign the contracts and then send it back using um via email you can either print out the contracts and sign and then email it or scan it back or you can use different apps online i have used apps um like um auto sign or auto fill you find apps online google which apps you can use to sign documents online it's easier like that and then the salary it depends on the experience and the qualification for someone who has a bachelor's degree it's they do not have the starting point that is similar to someone who has a master's degree or or, or a phd unfortunately if you have an honors degree it is not recognized as as um a qualification here in Taiwan you only we only recognize bachelor's degree master's degree as well as a PhD so salary starts from 62,720 NTD to 91,420 NTD which is plus minus 34 to 35,000 rands but that money is before deductions before tax so in taiwan within the first six months they tax 18 percent of your salary and then within the next six months in in a full year they tax um i think six percent but then you get back the the difference in of of the tax you get it back so every year we apply that is going to be something i'm going to touch base on a different video but so that you are aware so in rents your take home after deduction if you do not have any experience um it is most likely going to be plus minus twenty eight thousand rands but for someone who already have experience it might be plus minus thirty two thousand rands take home Right, and then teaching hours in a week, it is 40 hours, um, exclu excluding lunch break, but these are just hours um, depending on each school and depending on each contract, hours are not the same. For example, I teach 22 hours in a week um, because that is the arrangement between me and the school, um, but I have office hours as well. Those are just my teaching hours. I have office hours, I attend meetings, I have so many things that I'm doing within the week which covers or adds up to 40 hours and then also you get housing housing allowance you get about 5000 nt which is around 2.5 rands to help assist your um housing um costs because i'm going to do all of that in a separate video where i cover the the costs regarding um apartments traveling to work and all of that so if you are single like me you get around five thousand um ncd and you if you are moving with your family then you get <clears throat> ten thousand ncd um and then also your air ticket allowance it is up to forty thousand nt for um do not pay for business class so for economy class it is um up to forty thousand nt one way so you only get a reimbursement of the flights after you um land in taiwan so it is only once a year when you come to taiwan beginning of your contract and at the end of your contract when you go back to south africa so if you renew your contracts with your school then whenever you come 
back to South Africa, um, to Taiwan after the, the one year to maybe start the new contract to give you another 40,000 allowance to travel back to Taiwan. So each contract comes with um, an allowance. Again, contracts are not the same. So it depends. Some contracts might say, I know I, I once got a contract that said up to 20,000 NT and I declined that offer because I felt like flights are very expensive at this point and it's very, you know, it's tricky for me to, to accept that offer. And then what if the flight is more than 20,000 NT, maybe the flight is 15,000 rands, which is around 30,000 NT. So it means I must pay off the difference. No. So you need to make sure that you understand the contracts and you understand what you are signing up for. And again, the school is the one that is in charge or the, the school is the one that is responsible for all these costs, especially the airline uh, or the, the airfare. They are the ones who are going to draft how much they are willing to pay for you. Right. Um, also, you get health insurance. Again, that is also uh, mandatory for everyone living in Taiwan or all foreigners coming to Taiwan to get health insurance. Your school is going to sponsor your health insurance. The school is going to sponsor your work permits. The school is going to basically sponsor everything that needs to because they are your main sponsors. But... Um, Obviously, you also have an agency in between. So whatever questions you have, send them through to your agent if you don't have direct communication with your school. Um, also, when you come this side, then you will have a direct con communication with the school. Then you can ask your school if it needs further um, maybe information, then you can always speak to your coordinator. They are going to be very helpful. And then the most important part now is to have budgets. So I know traveling from South Africa at the moment is very hard, but you need to prepare. Prepare and save money. If you are currently working, I'd suggest that you save money. If you want to resign, I'd suggest that you just make sure that you have money and the money that you might need is plus minus 35,000 rands to cover all costs. It could be less than 35,000 rands, but budgets between 30 to 35,000 rands. That is going to cover your traveling costs. It's going to cover your quarantine hotel. Because yes, when you arrive in Taiwan, you still need to quarantine. Um, and it's going to cover your apartment uh, costs. It's also going to just cover you for the first month before you get paid. So keep that in mind. Um, and also just start practicing Mandarin while you are still in South Africa, just to make sure that you understand basic things like, um, how to say hello, how to say thank you, maybe how to count, you know, simple things. And then, um, most importantly, your agent is going to guide you. So there are things I didn't mention in the video, things like the process of getting your work permits, your, um, everything that is required for you to get a visa um because your agent is going to take you through that so there's no need for me to tell you those details because i really feel like it's going to diverge away from the core uh, purpose of this video which is sharing information to you on how to get the job so that is a separate video which i'm going to do on a separate um video where i'm going to share with you all those um, details, like for example, so now that you've gotten your job, what is the next step, how to get the visa, where to get the visa, how much, the agencies we normally use in South Africa to get visas, if maybe you stay in the Eastern Cape or you stay in KwaZulu Natal and you cannot travel to Pretoria, people who can help you um, with getting the, the, the visa, you can send them your passports and they send it back. That's too much information for another video already this video is too long but to wrap up the video now i'm going to touch base on why i prefer or recommend taiwan how can i put it the culture in taiwan it's it's not too shocking you know i feel like taiwan is relatable it is a country where you can relate if you are coming from south africa a lot of things yes they are quite different but also, I mean, I'm happy. I am able to move around. Um, and also, being in Taiwan is really um, safe. 
it's safe the living costs are not high um there's freedom there is flexibility also there is a lot to learn there's a lot there's a lot to do there's so many places you can travel to um and i would suggest that you come to taiwan um if you are a first time applicant or someone who has never been abroad ever i i recommend taiwan as your first a place to move to or to come to because you are going to have fun you are going to enjoy um how is it like to be with foreign uh, people in a foreign country who are going to accept you and love you and teach you a lot about their culture the food they like to eat and basically things happening in the country and i know some people say that oh the money in taiwan is not a lot maybe to some yes but it's so much better than being in south africa guys we understand the situation in south africa is currently not good at all so i would suggest if given the opportunity move from south africa for a few years save as much as you can have a budget even if you feel Feel like it's not enough but it's something so much better than what you could get if you are, if you were in south africa if, if if you continue staying in south africa you see now i'm rambling because i'm feeling so exhausted i'm feeling so tired it's been a very long video but uh overall or to end this video in a high note is be open-minded um moving into a foreign country is not easy but be open-minded to change, um, have an open heart to accept things that you have no control over. And when you come this side, please make sure that you look after yourself and also try to make new friends and try to guard your, your peace, try to also guard your heart and also just... Um, enjoy the process enjoy the experience and if you have been watching till this very end thank you so much i hope that you guys really enjoyed this video i hope it was very informative and i hope that you are going to lend yourself a job if you are looking into traveling and working into taiwan let me know in the comment section below and also send me um a dm if you um also have already started your process to coming to taiwan and um good luck that's all i can say uh please do not forget to subscribe like share and um comment on this video bye bye